Got an LML Duramax with a reductant heater problem or a death heater problem? Nuts and bolts with Tone here guys and today I have a 2015 LML Duramax with a reductant heater problem. I've diagnosed it to being a bad death heater or reductant heater uh, and currently I have a code P20B9. Death heater one control circuit. So that code is going to be, usually it's going to be one of two things. It's going to be the death heater or it's going to be wiring. Uh, generally, I mean, when you look it up, that's usually what it is. It's most of the time the death heater. That's what I've uh, diagnosed it to be. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace it. And I'm going to tell you how to get your truck out of limp mode. This truck came in with four miles left. No, yeah, with four miles left before, uh, no, six miles left before four miles per hour. So it's pretty much almost at a standstill uh, when I got it. So let's get going. But before we do, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Now let's go change out this Def Eater. Now, one thing that really is not fun about this job is that you can't really, you, I guess you could rack the truck in a perfect situation. I have tried to rack these trucks multiple times and the lift arm is always in the way of the def tank. I just can't quite get to it. So I've done every one of these on the ground, uh, which makes it even less fun. However, I don't want to be working with a lift arm like this and I'm trying to go around it and, but I, I've tried with the lift arms and have it in the air and it just doesn't work for me. First thing you're going to do is disconnect that clamp up there. That is your filler hose. You're going to go ahead and uh, remove that clamp or just, you know, depress it and pull it back. And then get the hose off if you can. You may not be able to. Uh, and then we got to take this shield off. And this shield has bolts right here, there, and there. So somebody had been in here before me and this part wasn't in the hole so it was moving so that's why this is all loose but this hook right here there's one on each one uh, right up there so these tabs are on that hook so you have to you have to pull the the shield like this and then hit it up and get it to pop past the clips so now we've got the We've got the shield on the ground. It's going to make a mess. There's dirt everywhere. So you don't have to disconnect that yet. You can actually wait until you get this partially dropped down and then you have more access to it. Uh, and then I always put a, a, a paint marker across it so I know exactly where it's supposed to be when I'm done. So that way I don't have any leaks. So on the way down, you're going to have to undo the vent right there. And it is right here. And then you're going to have to undo that fuel line right there. And then now you just got to disconnect the connectors uh, and get it out. And we'll take a look at it. So there's a bulkhead up here that has a clip. Pop it out. It sits on top of the frame. And then go ahead and get it like this. You can undo this and you can bring the whole, the whole harness down with the tank. And so once we get it out like this, you want to go ahead and blow everything off of the top of here before you disconnect anything at all and put a cap over this nipple right here because that's your def line. Got this cover right here that's got a zip tie right there and a zip tie right there. Go ahead and cut those zip ties. Go ahead and get that cover off. And then now we really need to spray this off before we do anything. And there's my cap. We want all the dirt off of this connector right here you're going to just stick something in here and just kind of work both sides back and forth and then this connector will come off as this comes out and the bolts for the strap are t40 the two straps there's two of them so now that we've got it all like this we need to get this pump off of here and so we're going to use a four millimeter um, extra long allen 
and we're going to unbolt this pump and we're going to get the pump off of the top of here so we can access the heater which is inside the tank. And just be real careful that you have your uh, your socket all the way inside. Sometimes this gets dirt in it and if you put your socket in there it like halfway goes in and it will round so you may have to take like a screwdriver and chip some of the dirt away uh, and a little air nozzle and blow it out so you can not strip them out. And then your pump will lift up just like that. This little seals right there. And then now what you want to do is stick your fingers over those two holes and blow this the rest of the way off and get it clean because we got to take that ring off and get this heater out. So what you want is an adjustable uh, tool like this. And then you're going to put a ratchet here and break this ring free and then take this out. So you got to kind of work the lid up like this. So here, here's what it's going to look like, like this. And you're going to have a seal in the middle here. So what you got to do once you get this up, then you got to pull this seal out of here like this. And then go ahead and just work your seal up over the outside of this to get it out of the way. Because then we got to turn the inside. So you got to rotate this inside counterclockwise because you got these tabs here that lock in. So it's just going to be one little click, and then it's going to come out like this. And here we are. And now you can get a better view. You see those, those four little tabs there. That's where it goes in, and then it's going to turn right there. When we get ready to put this back in, you got to, first of all, you got to remember which orientation that the, that the pump went in. And you can see those notches down there. And we got to push the element down and turn it clockwise until it clicks. So first bit of advice I can give you is buy a good quality def heater. Seen many times where we put aftermarket ones in and they, uh, and they ended up with a problem. So you're going to get a seal. You get a new ring cap. You're going to have your zip ties that are going to go around the perimeter. You're going to have your seals, your two seals, and new bolts for the pump. And you're going to have the little filter and the little screen. All right, so you're not going to put your seal on yet. What you're going to do is you're going to take your pump like this, and it's going to go in like that, and you're going to turn it down until it clicks. Now, the way it was when I took it out was this part right here was aimed forward. You can also tell because the wires were on this side of the pump, on the outside. So you want to make sure that you put it on correctly. It should be a very easy click when you click it in. If it's not easy, then you don't have it right. Plus the tabs are oriented so you can't put it in backwards. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your seal and we're going to go ahead and slide it over the part here and then we're going to stick it in here. Now it's got to go between the death heater and the, the inside of the tank. Make sure your seal is flush all the way around like that. And it should be inside of the death heater. So now just take a little bit of sill glide and go around the inside of this or lube, whatever. So your pump slides down nice and easy. All right. When we're putting the pump back in, you're going to see this reference. Let me blow it up so you can see really important that you do this. So there's going to be two marks on the tank and there's going to be an arrow on the pump and you're going to, or on the death heater, the reservoir assembly, you're going to make sure that that's lined up because if it's not, then your uh, def pump, when it goes on, your fluid line won't line up correctly. So it's very important right there. All right, so here's what I was talking about right here. So if you can look right here, you see this notch right there and this notch right here. And then you can see the arrow right there. That arrow has to line up in those two notches like that. So once we do that, go ahead and... uh and spin your ring. But as you spin your ring, make sure that your pump doesn't move. Cause sometimes, sometimes when you have a unit like this, fuel pumps or anything, if it's not notched in the housing, then sometimes it will turn a little bit with the, with the ring. So we got to make sure that we are still lined up. All right. So technically you're supposed to use this and torque this down to 63 foot pounds. Um, I had a really hard time. It kept slipping off. And so I just turned it until the arrow lined up right there in the, in the notches. 
and it's tight. So we're good to go. So they give you two seal. They give you two seals. They give you this one here. But every time I've gotten one of these def heaters for any vehicle, this one is already installed. So this is an extra. I don't know why, but you got to put this little O-ring in there. And then go ahead and wipe off your pump. Wipe off the bottom of your pump and then lube it up a little bit. So you're going to have this guy right here. You're going to pop that in. And then you got the filter cap. You're going to put that over. Should just snap right on. <laughs> Does he have plates? You got plates? It snaps on. It's just a little hard to do. And you have new screws with your pump, so make sure you use them. Now, you don't want to tighten them down too tight. But before you put your screws in, you want to make sure that your pump is all the way down. Don't use the screws to pull it down. It should slide in. If it doesn't, then something is wrong. One tip is if you are going to lube up your pump, make sure that you do not get it on the end of the pump. You don't want it to go into your fluid or at all mix with your def whatsoever. So before we connect the harnesses, what I recommend is you take some uh, an air and blow out all the connectors, all the places for the connectors um, to make sure that there's no dirt and, uh, and grime in there. We're going to go ahead and blow all this out and get everything connected. So you want to make sure that all your connectors click in place really good because you don't want to have any issues because uh, this is not easy to get to. And then the other thing you're going to do is make sure that you put these clips and they slide on here and they slide down because there's a notch that holds them in place. This connector is actually going to slide backwards until it locks in place. And then this is going to connect over it. Make sure it clicks in. See, mine's not clicking in. You got to make sure it clicks in. And then you want to put more zip ties over here. The only two things not connected should be this connector and that connector. And don't forget to put your cover over this. So here's what it should look like. You're going to use your zip ties to hold the cover down in place. Make sure your vent goes through this little hole here. You're going to secure your harness over here, over here. And now we're ready to go back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a slight amount of uh, lube around this nipple here, but make sure it's not near the edge and then also around the vent. So it slides on easier and you may want to blow out your bulkhead that's up above the frame rail. So that way this connects easy. I'm going to slide it under the truck over here. And the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and connect the def line here and the connector. And then we're going to slide it forward and you have to lift it up in order to connect the vent. And then we got to put the straps in to put it in place. And that's what I'm talking about right there. So we got to slide it up until those holes engage in the clips front and rear. So when your diesel is in limp mode and limp mode will be getting a message on the dash that says you have this many miles before this many miles, like you've, you've gotten your warnings, you know, it, in the beginning, it says like you have this many miles before 65 and then you have this many miles before 55. And then, you know, usually when I get them, it's, you know, they pretty much are almost either at four miles per hour or, or, or almost there. This truck was like at six, six miles before four miles an hour. So pretty much almost couldn't go anywhere or maybe it was the other way around. But anyways, almost in complete standstill. Uh, and so to do that, to get it out of that, you're going to need a scan tool that is capable of doing a Tamper Bay warning system test. And it's going to go through and do a whole bunch of stuff and pretty much determine itself to be that the deaf system is okay. You are also going to have to do uh, a reductant system uh, reset. So I do a reset on everything and, uh, and then that takes care of it. Now, another thing that you can do to get a Duramax out of limp mode. Now I've done this many times and it's worked in just about every truck unless it's in complete standstill mode is you get it up to full operating temperature and you go from a standstill. And I, it's been a minute since I did it, but you go to about 55 miles per hour. I mean, wide open throttle. Don't let off. And as soon as you hit 55, let off the throttle, no brake. And what the computer is looking for is it's looking for that knock sensor to just go. And if it drops really quickly and everything looks good, then I've had it come out of limp mode on one pull. Then I've had, I've had a few that it took me two or three times. Now this is, you have to have a good knock sensor and everything has to be working correctly. But that is one way to get it out of limp mode. And then I've had a couple where... Uh, I had to do the tamper warning bay test. 
So there's all kinds of ways to do it. The top Don scan tools will do that. I have the Phoenix Light 3 and I did everything with the Phoenix Light 3. So that is how you get it out of limp mode once you've made your repair. After watching this video, I'm sure that replacing your def heater in your LML Duramax is not going to be super difficult. And it, I mean, if maybe you're like leery of touching things or how to, how to do them, do them properly, this video is definitely going to help you not be worried about that. But there is one thing that no matter how much you watch the video, that is not going to be easier. And that is taking off that plastic cover and putting it back on. It is never fun. And it is always just packed full of dirt. So be prepared to have mouthfuls of dirt. I, I think I still have dirt in my ear uh, from doing that job. Um, and I finished it yesterday. So, yeah. So anyways, thanks for watching the video. And uh, drop a comment down below and let me know if you've replaced a deaf heater in one of these. And hey, if you've got a trick to that plastic cover, man, let me know. Because it is just not fun. I'll see you guys next time.